All right, so we'll do one more example of the research question in identifying the population and sample. Uh, yes, do, do we want to go back to that one? Sure, okay. So the last one we said, what is the average number of hours spent on homework per day for high school students? And our data was that we randomly sampled or surveyed 80 high school students and recorded how long they spent on homework. Okay. The population in this case would be all high school students in the USA. Okay. The population is always everybody who is relevant to our question. Or everything that is relevant to our question, that's in the population. We cannot study the population because everyone is too many people to study. So we work on a sample, which is a selection from that population. Did you have a question? Yeah. Um, in the last with the Tootsie Pops, you said that the population was the Tootsie Pops and the people. Yes. Um, so could you, could you include like the homework load or something as possible? OK, so the population could be all so students and every single day. I'm sorry? You said you work on the sample. Yeah, so in order to answer a question, we have to gather data, right? So the, we're only going to have data from the sample that we've, we've studied, okay? We're not going to have data on the population because that's too many people, too many people. Okay, so let's try, try this again. We're going to try to identify the population and the sample, okay? So let's say I want to know what is the average height of males in the United States uh, over age 20. What is the population? And uh, oh, I didn't define how we've gathered our uh, data. Okay, um, but okay. Let's just uh, let's just see if we can answer what is the population. So I'll give you a minute. Don't shout out your answer. Just I'll give you a few seconds to think about to answer this question. What is the average height of males in the U.S. over age 20? The relevant population would be what? So think about this. Maybe I'll put some uh, multiple choice answer options. Okay. So uh, we can measure heights. Okay, so based on these answer choices, you would tell me that the answer is D. 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 Okay, this is everybody that's relevant to this question, which is what is the average height of males in the USA over age 20? We are looking at all males. This is the population that we want. All males over age 20 in the USA. Not all males, because that would be everybody in the world, and not all males in the USA, because that would include people under age 20. This is 
we have defined our population as all males over age 20 in the USA. That's still a lot of people. That's too many people to try to gather the height information about, okay? So maybe our sample, um, we might choose, uh, maybe we randomly select 300 males over age 20 uh, within the USA. Okay. So perhaps that might be the sample that we select to answer our question. Okay. So when when we are presented with a research question, are we comfortable with trying to figure out the population? Okay. So I'll try to uh, I'll try to put like another example problem like this up on the um, the homework page. Okay. Because this is this is very important. This is. The, um, the idea behind all of statistics is that the population, this thing is too big, okay? We cannot look, <clears throat> we cannot study all males over age 20 in the USA. That's just too many people. So maybe we are dealing with a sample of 300 people, okay? Based on the 300 people that we observe, we can still answer this question, okay? Or at least get a good idea of what the answer to this question is, okay? We might not get an exact number, but we'll get a good idea of what the answer is to this question. And that's what statistics does, okay? It allows us to make conclusions from limited data. So in this case, our limited data is just the 300 males, okay? Or 300 males over age 20 within the USA. This is the limited data, okay, using this we can still, using this limited data, we can still make conclusions and answer this research question. OK. Does everyone have a calculator today? Who does not have a calculator? Raise your hand. Oh, gosh. What about a cell phone that does calculator functions? OK, I'm going to put a few exercises up on the board, OK? And go back, share. <laughs> I'm going to put some exercises up on the board, and this is to see just make sure you can use your calculator correctly, OK? Uh, we will have a few of these questions on the quiz next week. This is not material I am teaching, per se, because this is material that you should know and have learned prior to this class. But it's important that you know, and I'll periodically put questions from prerequisite classes into our quizzes and such. Okay. All right, can I move on to the next slide? One second. It's still not clear to me why the Tootsie Pops and the people were included in population and only people were included in the high school. If you wanted to, you could include um, all people and all possible days of homework loads Okay, into the, uh, the second question. Yeah, that, that's certainly a possibility. Uh, yes, question. Do I have a video on how to use a calculator? Um, I will give you some drills right now. I will show you how to answer those questions or those drills with the calculator right here. There's, this is going to be recorded. And so on your own time, you can review this recording and make sure you know how to use your calculator. OK? All right. I'm, yes, Aaron. I'm sorry. I'm, okay, so the question is, what is the average height? And then after that, you have the same population. For the quiz, you have this kind of question with, say, population, or would it not say? The, the question might be, um, what is the relevant population? OK, relevant population to this question, 
to answer the research question. Okay. All right. So uh, let's just see. Okay. So this will be. Uh, that's not the tool I want. Um, all right. So this is will be your first question. Solve. Okay, so come up with an answer for this. Come up with an answer for with an answer for that and come up with an answer for okay and I'll say keep four at least four decimal places for each answer So here's an opportunity to just make sure you know how to use your calculator. So that one actually has five decimal places, but okay. All right, so <coughs> this is this type of math you guys have seen before, correct? And you know what to do when you see squares and square roots. And you should know how to use your calculator to answer these questions, OK? So I'm going to um, show you exactly what you need to press on the calculator to get these answers, OK? So for this one, you're going to enter 3.4 and hit the square button to get that, OK? So you're going to hit 3.4 and then there's the square button on the, um, so this is using a Casio calculator. If you have a TI or something else, it's going to be a little bit different, okay? So you're going to hit the square button, and I'm going to hit the divide key 12, okay? So it's going to be, okay, 12, and then I'm going to hit the plus key, okay? So, so this part, so I'm doing everything within the parentheses, uh, within the square root first, okay? So I'm going to hit 3.4 squared, divide key 12, and then I'm going to hit the plus key, and I'm going to do 2.8 squared, divide key 9. Okay, And so this gives me everything that's inside the parentheses. I mean, not in parentheses, inside the square root. Okay, So I'm going to then hit 2.8 square button, division sign 9. And then I'm going to hit the equals button. Okay? And I hit equals and I see 1.8344444. Okay? And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the square root button 
and I'm going to hit the answer key. And then I'm going to hit equals. And I get my answer, 1.3544, okay? So then the next thing is I'm going to hit the square root button. Then I hit the answer key. And then I hit the equals button. All right, and that will give me the answer. Is that okay? Now, uh, maybe a side note. Some of you, when you set up your calculator, you need to uh, adjust settings, okay? So if your settings aren't correct on this calculator, you might have to go to Shift, Setup, and you want to select Line I.O., which is 2, okay? So you're gonna, you might have to do for the setup, okay? You have to do Shift, Setup, 2 for Line I.O., and then the next thing you're going to do is shift, setup, 8, 2. Okay? These, this is just a sequence of getting um, the setup of the calculator correct. So you're going to hit shift, setup, norm 8, and norm 2. Okay? And that, that will get you the, um, the proper way. So to get the answers here, 3.4 square button divide 12 plus 2.8 square button divide 9 equals, and then after that comes out, then you hit the square root, the answer button equals. Is that okay with everyone? Yes, question. Uh, why did you say norm? I was looking down. Uh, it's just, so there's scientific notation, okay, and that's like x times 10 to the negative 12 and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, norm just puts it in our normal day-to-day -day decimal usage, okay? okay? And so that's that's what it does, all right? So if you get one of these Casio calculators, you're gonna do, uh, you might have to do shift setup two, shift setup eight two, okay? When you get first started, because otherwise, um, you know, if you have it under uh, math IO and you do, uh, you know, what's the square root of five, it might say it's the square root of five, and that's not what we want, okay? So if you do shift setup, line IO and you do square root of 5, it'll tell you, okay, this is the decimal that we want, okay? Is that good? All right, okay, so for the next one, how do we enter this, okay? Well, this is um, simple, all right? I'm just going to enter it exactly the way I see it. I've got parentheses button on my uh, calculator, so I'm going to hit parentheses, 0.437, uh, and then I'm going to close the parentheses, and then I'm going to hit parentheses again, and I'm going to do 1 minus 0.437, and I'm going to hit the close parentheses, and I'm going to do the parentheses again, and do 1 divided by 100 plus 1 divided by 25, and hit the close parentheses button, and then I'm going to hit equals. Okay, that's going to give me everything on the inside of the calculator, so you can watch me hit this. I'm going to hit parentheses. 0.437, close parentheses, oops, and open, 1 minus 0.437, close the parentheses, and then we'll do 1 over 100 plus 1 over 25, close parentheses. Okay, so I just typed in everything that you see here, the way I entered it, and then I'm going to hit equals. Okay, and it gives me this. Is that okay? And then I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to, so after that's done, I'm going to hit the square root button, then the answer key, and then equals. And I get that. Square root button, answer key, and then equals. All right, so this is just so we know how to use our calculators. It's a bit more work with the TI, and that's why I don't feel like uh, explaining it right now. I can, I can explain to you uh, afterwards, okay? So again, if you don't own, currently own a calculator, you know, this week, and you don't have the textbook or whatever, go buy the textbook, buy a calculator, okay? This is my preferred brand. You don't, you aren't required to use this, but... Um, you know, I've just demoed how to use this particular one. You so see, you're not required. You use whatever you want, um, but whatever. Okay, so here we're going to do the same thing. 
Um, you can hit multiplication, but I'm going to just stick with entering the data as we see it. Open, close parentheses, parentheses, open, 1 minus 0.82, parentheses button, div divide sign 68, equals button. And then we're going to do square root button, answer key, equals button. Okay. So you will see questions like this on the quiz next week. And it's just a matter of making sure you can use your calculator correctly. Because that is an important skill that you need to have in this class. So again, I'm just entering it just the way I said I would. I hit equals, then I hit the square root button, hit the answer key, and hit equals. All right. And notice here, if I were to round off to four decimal places, what would I round it off to? 0 0.0466. If I keep not five decimal places, this 8 gets rounded up to a 9. So make sure you know how to round correctly. Okay? So rounded to 4 would be 0 0.0466. Okay? So make sure you know how to round correctly because the multiple choice answers um, will have a rounding we'll have rounding done, okay? And if it'll be done correctly, just uh, just make sure yours lines up. Okay. Yes, question? I got 0 0.0514. 0 0.0514 for yeah, C? Yeah. Okay, I, I have a feeling you typed something in incorrectly. I got the same thing. Uh, you use 0 0.82 and uh, 68? You got that also? I don't, I don't know what's going on. OK. Uh, here, I'll, I'll do it on mine. <laughs> so 0 0.821 minus 0 0.82, close parentheses, divided by 68. And I hit equals, and I hit the square root of that. And I get that. What are you using as your calculator? Your iPhone. I have a feeling your iPhone is probably rounding off to uh, something a little bit different. Okay, we can, we can check Google. No, it says I'm not connected to the internet. How is that possible? This is what Google says, so, um, okay. So I think, I think something, I think something else is happening on your calculator, okay? So make sure you get a calculator. Uh, again, I, I don't allow you to use cell phones on the quizzes and things like that. Yes, question? Yeah, for rounding, if it was uh, 0 0.0464, uh -huh. would just round up to five? Uh, okay, well, let's see. So you're saying it's 0 0.0464. What comes after the 4? Let's say, okay, let's say that after is a 4. Okay, so if it's 0 0.04644 and you want to round to 4 decimals, so then you count 1, 2, 3, 4. So uh, this is the spot that we're rounding to. You just look at the number after the place you're rounding. And if it's 5 or higher, you push this one up. And if it's 4 or lower, you just drop it. So in this case, it would be 0 0.0464. OK? OK. Yes, question. Are we allowed to be like get the notes or something to the uh, I, I haven't decided that. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll make a decision and put it up on the, uh, on the website. Okay. On the tests? On the, on the tests, you're allowed to have crib sheets, yes. One page. Yeah, one page. Back one page. Front and back, yes. 
okay, so those are those are drills, uh, calculator drills. You can expect to see some of those on next week's quiz. Make sure you can work through the calculator and do this. Okay, so check this, uh, you know, on online and uh, and do your do your due diligence. Okay, so let's. Uh, we also need to talk about. Um, let's talk about data. Okay. So when we have uh, data, just imagine. Uh, you have to imagine what our data file looks like. Okay. Imagine the data file or the data table. And depending on what we have, every row in the data table is a case or an entry, or an entry, or you know maybe it represents a person, okay, representing. Representing a person or or a thing, okay. And each column is a variable variable that's being recorded. All right, so let's say we wanted to answer you know, uh, our research question. So I'm just going to abbreviate research question as, what is the average height of men in the US over age 20? All right, so your data table. You know, will consist of several rows. And we have, you know, a person. And so maybe we have Adam, we have Bob, we have Carl, etc., etc., etc. Okay? And the piece of information that is relevant is the height. Maybe Adam is 70 inches, maybe Bob is. 72 and Carl is 68 or something like that. Okay, so this is the bit of information. Maybe we've recorded other bits of information. So maybe we've recorded the sex, and in this case, all of these are male. Maybe we've also recorded the age, and so we maybe uh, uh, we have 23 and 45 and 37. Okay, these are all different bits of information. So each row is a person. And each column is a variable. So what are, what other variables might we record about these people? That it might not necessarily be relevant to our research question, but what other information could we record? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, maybe um, home home state. Okay. So maybe we have someone from California and Washington and Texas or something like that. Okay. Yeah. So those are. Uh, those are other bits of information we could record. Or uh, you know, maybe instead of home state, we have zip code or something like that. OK? Is that OK? So let, let me just copy this. Oops. All right. So we have each, um, each column is a variable, and we have two types of variables.
we have numeric variables, and we have categorical variables. Numeric variables tell us how much or how many. Categorical variables, they tell us what type or what kind. All right, so let's just go through our variables here. Height would be what, numeric or categorical? Numeric, okay? It tells us how tall someone is. The sex of someone would be categorical. Age, numeric. Home state, categorical. What if I put in a uh, zip code or area code? Area code, so maybe this one is 310, and this one I don't know what 909 and. Six two three. I'm making up numbers here. Okay, what 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 is that? This is categorical. Okay, it it looks like a number. It is a number, but it doesn't tell us how much or how many. It tells us just what kind. Okay, it's a category. Area code would be a category. All right. Let's have. Let's say we have a summary table. Okay. So we have a, a summary uh, summarizing data, OK? So let's say we go through and we tally up where everybody lives, OK? So let's say we, have, um, we gathered data on 50 people, OK? All right, and let's say this is uh, the information we've gathered. Okay, so we've got state, and we're going to count. Um, we have what we call the frequency. How many times did that state show up? Okay, so right now our frequency table would be very boring. It would just say California showed up once, Washington showed up once, and Texas showed up once. Okay. But let's say um, you know we gathered it on a, a whole bunch of people, and we have you know California, Washington, Texas, you know Florida, and New York, and let's say that was that was all the uh, all the data that we've gathered, okay? And so let's say we had uh, 22 and 12 and uh, 10. Let's see, that's. Okay, let's say this is what we have. Okay, so this is our summary table, and it just shows up how, how often did California show up. And so that means how many people came from the state of California. 22. 22 people came from the state of California. And in our survey, 12 people came from the state of Washington, 10 people came from Texas, 8 came from Florida, and 8 came from New York. Okay? Is that okay? Again, what kind of variable is state? Categorical. Categorical. Okay? So sometimes people see a frequency table and they're thrown off. They think we're dealing with a numeric variable. Okay? Just keep in mind. The variable state is categorical. Okay, so just because you see counts and numbers here, that is that doesn't make state a numeric variable. The variable state is still a categorical variable. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's sixty people. I don't know if that matters. But it's... Is it twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty? Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we gather data on 60 people. Sure. OK, so the variable state is still a categorical variable. OK, so our total number of people 
as we have it. There's 60 people, okay? So I can ask, and this is, you might see a question like this, given a uh, frequency table or perhaps a, a bar chart, I could say what percentage of people in our data in our sample come from Texas? And you would tell me So what percentage of people in our sample come from Texas? You would say 16.7%. Do we uh, can we agree on that? How did I get 16.7? I would do 10 divided by 60. Okay, and that gives me 0.166666. Okay? So if I were to round it or turn it into a percentage, I move the decimal over two spaces and round off to 16.7. Is that okay? It should have been covered in math prior to this course. Okay, but I'm just, just checking. Okay, what percentage come from Washington? So maybe we'll chain, we'll add a column called relative frequency where we just add um, percentages here, okay? So relative frequency here, I would write 16.7%. Washington, I would write what? 20%, okay. California, I would write what? 36.7%, good. Okay, and uh, the other ones I would write 13.3%. Uh, no, but more is generally better. I'm, I'm just using essentially three, I guess. Okay? You have to be comfortable with both percentages and decimals, okay? You have to be able to say, okay, 0.16666666, this is equivalent to 16.66. Um, let's say that percentage, okay? You've got to be comfortable switching between decimals and percentages. Okay, that's got to be, prior to taking this class, you've got to be comfortable with this. Otherwise, we're, we're in for some hurt. All right, is that okay? Yeah. Frequency table, summary data. <laughs> Do I need to go back? Just, just, is, what's the, is that real frequency? Relative frequency. Oh. Okay, sorry. Let me... Uh, uh, expand that. That's a good question. Relative frequency. Okay. And this summary table, what do we call it again? The summary table is called a frequency table. You have a few exercises in your homework covering frequency tables. Yeah, relative frequency is a percentage, okay? Relative frequency means instead of showing me the counts, turn everything into a percentage so that everything adds up to 100%. And so you just take each number and you divide by the total. Let's say, uh, let me copy this actually. So this here is called a frequency table and a relative frequency table. We could also have a bar chart. Okay. And a bar chart, all that does is it turns our uh,
frequency table into a graphic display. Okay. Okay. So every time you make a display, you've got to create at least on one of the axes a, a number line of some sort. And so over here, I'm going to create bars for each of these categories that I've got. California, Washington, Texas, Florida, and New York. And I'm going to draw bars showing how high each of these are. Okay, so this one is 22 units high. Washington is 12, so it goes right about there. Texas goes up to 10 units. Florida is 8. Okay, and so our, our bar chart looks something like this, okay? And, uh, you know, you might have to create more precise, precise whatever. And you can color these in if you want. It's going to look terrible. Oops. <laughs> Paint bucket. Okay. So here, this one is 22 units high, and that's 12, and 10, and 8, and 8, okay? So if you were shown only the bar chart, you should be able to conclude, you should be able to generate the frequency table based on the bar chart, okay? So you should be able to go from one to the other, okay? And do we feel comfortable with that? Okay, good. And also, if you're shown the bar chart and thus you can d make your own frequency table, you should also be able to answer questions based on a bar chart, such as what percentage of participants came from Florida? By looking at the bar chart, you should be able to answer that and say it's 13.3%. Okay? Okay. Bar charts, again, what kind of data are we dealing with here? We are dealing with categorical data, right? Because state is what kind of variable? A categorical variable. Categorical variable, so we've got categorical data here, okay? Bar charts are for categorical data, okay? Don't be fooled by the fact that we have a count of how many people came from California. The variable of which state someone comes from is categorical. It's not numeric, categorical, okay? So we are dealing with categorical data. We have a concept of variation, okay? So let me um, let me show you two so let's talk about variation with bar charts and categorical data. OK, so let's just keep this simple. Let's say we are looking at gender. We've got male and female. And we're looking at. Uh, two different uh, classes, okay? Um, okay, so we've got, oops, sorry. This will be uh,
So we're just, this is just a count of how many people. All right, so let's say we've got 30 and 30 here, and we've got uh, 60 and five over here. Okay. So just imagine what these classrooms look like, okay? And I'm going to ask you, so we've got class A, and we have classroom B, or class B, okay? Which class, so don't shout out your answer, but which class has more variation in gender? Okay, think about your answer. Which class has more variation in gender? When it comes to bar charts and categorical data, right? Gender is categorical data. You're either male or female. Well, we'll, we'll just take the simplified worldview and say you're either male or female. I, I realize um, I want to be inclusive and say that you know not everybody identifies as such. But let's just say uh, we were ju we just had these two options and say uh, male or female. At, at least in these classrooms of 60 and 65 students. So I'm going to ask which class has more variation in gender? Who thinks class A has more variation? And who thinks class B has more variation? OK, so we're kind of split, all right? OK, well, the answer is class B has more variation. Now, why is that? Yeah, there's no dominant gender. You go in the class and it's split. Half of them are male, half are female. 30-30, okay? You've got, um, you've got a good mixture of males and females, okay? So you've got variation there, right? You pick someone at random from that classroom, you don't know if that person's going to be male or female, okay? Or uh, you have no idea. You've got, you can at best be 50% 50, 50 confident that the person you select is male or female, okay? In the other class, it's mostly guys, okay? 60 males, only five females, okay? If you were to walk in the classroom and you had no idea what it was about, you'd, you'd walk in and go like, whoa, it's a bunch of guys in here, okay? And then some, the, the girls would say, oh no, there's a few of us here. And you say, oh, okay, that's great. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. You know, you would be struck by the lack of quote, of um, diversity in in this class. Okay, so maybe this is like I don't know to be stereotypical. It could be like a engineering class or ROTC or something like that, where you've got um, a large gender uh, difference. And this might be more of a general studies class, right, where you've got uh, a fairly good mixture. Okay. So when it comes to categorical data, not having one category being dominant indicates more variation, OK? So for categorical data, okay, uh, when one category is dominant, there is less variation. Okay. Okay. When um, no category is dominant, is dominant, there's more variation. Does that concept make sense? Okay, and so this is a simple example where there's only two categories, but the same concept applies whether you have three or four or more categories. Okay, uh, so we have shown you how to display categorical data 
Uh, and what is this thing called again? This type of display? A bar chart, okay, and a bar chart is for categorical data, all right, important to note. So you have a few exercises from chapter two about uh, regarding bar charts and frequency tables, okay, and again, you should be, able, you should be comfortable answering those. Yes? Uh, just a quick clarification, you said you're going to post the, uh, the book pages on here. Yeah, so um, I will post the pages from the homework from chapters one and two uh, onto the Canvas website, okay? And that way it's uh, at least only those who are enrolled in the class and I'm not gonna get in uh, as much trouble for breaking copyrights and posting it onto um, my other website which is open to the public, okay? So, so that will go on Canvas and I'll, I will uh, indicate that on the, uh, on the website. Again, if you don't have the textbook right now, please make sure you order a textbook so that you have one by next week. If you don't have a textbook by next week, you're gonna be in trouble, okay? Because I'm not gonna post the uh, homework every single week. So I'll do that this week. That gives you a, a week to get your textbook. Um, get it from either the bookstore or someplace online. You might be able to rent it, whatever, okay? Make sure you also have a calculator, okay? Any other questions? You have a question. Can we access this from the website that you showed us, the, the Smiles trend? Yes. Website? So. On that website, here, I, I will show you uh, what I will do, okay? So there is a page that says lecture videos. Here, I'll, uh, let me zoom in. Okay, so you type in uh, XL10, and it looks like this, okay? This serves as our syllabus. On the left-hand side, you can see the homework assignment, and there will also be uh, lecture videos. This is from last quarter, okay? And you can click any of these uh, links to watch it. And then what I will also do is uh, all of these uh, these things that I've been writing down, I will also uh, put uh, online, and you can um, you can view the uh, the notes from from class. Okay, so so everything is there to uh, for your review. Yes, question. Are you gonna leave last? Uh, I'll leave, uh, I'll move it down, but yeah, I'll, I'll leave it up, okay? okay. Um, but you probably don't need to watch the last quarter's stuff. Unless, you know, unless you feel compelled. I would say focus on, uh, on the homework page, you know, topics for next week's quiz. I'm going to put, um, you know, go through all of these things, okay? Uh, you know, for given a research problem, identify the population, the sample, Oh, well, the quantity of interest, I didn't um, cover that, but basically when it says like the average height, quantity of interest is the average height. Okay, you wanna go for the average, whatever. The quantity of interest is what is this thing that the research question is asking for? That's, that's what, we, I, I'll, I'll flip back a few slides and answer that, okay? Identify variables and determine if it's numeric or categorical. We talked about that. Calculate proportions from a frequency table or a two-way table. I have to cover two-way tables. Know the difference between experiments and observational studies. I have not covered that, so that will come in the next half hour. And read and interpret information provided in bar charts, which we covered, right? So, evaluate square roots, fractions, and decimals with a calculator. We also did a few of those drills. You'll see some of those on the quiz. I'll put um, kind of uh, a few example problems. I'll, I'll link a, a document at the, uh, at the bottom here showing that. And that should help you get ready for next week's quiz, okay? All right, so let's go back uh, regarding um, just the quantities of interest from a previous slide. All right, so what is the average height of males in the US over age 20? We talked about the population, we talked about the sample, and in this case, the quantity of interest would be the average height, okay? This is the quantity of interest, so. Sorry, I forgot to point that out. Is that okay with everyone? I, I think it's a pretty straightforward concept, but we'll just, uh, just wanna double check. And then going back, let's see, what is the average number of hours spent on homework per day for high school students? What would the quantity of interest be here? Yeah, average number of hours spent on homework. 
per day. <laughs> okay, that would be the quantity of interest. Pretty, pretty straightforward in my opinion. Yes. What is blank for blank? Okay, you know, the what is that? That's going to be the quantity of interest for this pop group of people. That's going to be the population. The sample is the data that you're dealing with. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I'll. I will try to get up maybe even a sample multiple choice quiz, okay? So you can see what kind of answer choices you might be faced with. And then um, and I'll, I'll post the answers at the bottom of the homework page or something. So you can do a practice quiz, check your answers, okay? I want you guys to do well. I'm trying to uh, give you what you need to succeed, but you gotta do your part in Practicing and learning and doing your homework. Yes. I apologize. I forgot to ask you. I asked earlier, but um, do we have to bring the book into class every day? Do you have to bring the book? Uh, no, you don't have to. I, I would say it's probably a good idea to do so, though. Um, I might make reference to it, but it's not like you're going to lose points or something. Yes. Question? No. No question. It looks like. Okay. So let's, um, let's talk about two-way tables. It's another way to summarize our data. Okay, so let's just imagine another data table. All right, and let's say we uh, ask, uh, let's say we go through our classroom, okay? And uh, we ask for our student's name, the student, We're going to ask your uh, gender. We will ask if you are left-handed or right-handed. OK, and so I'm going to just put in some fake data here. All right, let's say we have Amber, female. She is right-handed. and. Uh, Brett, male, left-handed, and uh, Casey. Is Casey male or female? We will say this Casey is female and right-handed, and uh, Dan, Danny. Is Danny male or female? <laughs> We'll say this Danny is male and uh, right-handed, and uh, Erica is female and uh, right-handed. Sure. OK. Oh, no, no. Let's make Erica left-handed. All right. Uh, OK. And so let's say we have, um, OK, let's make a two-way table here. All right. So a two-way table is like a frequency table, but it encounters two, two variables. Okay, And what kind of variables do we have here? They're both categorical, right? So both variables are categorical. OK. So we have gender, and we have handedness. Okay, so we have males, we have females, we have left-handed, uh, right-handed, and we have left-handed. Okay, stop with that. Oh, this table is awful. All right, so how many males in our data? are right-handed, right-handed males? I would say one, OK? How many males are left-handed? One. How many females are right-handed? I have two right-handed females. And how many females are left-handed? One. OK, so our total 
we have five people total. We have three right-handed people, two left-handed people, three females total, and two males total, okay? So these are our total columns. And this is a two-way table, okay? So this is a very simple example where uh, we just had five entries in our data table. OK. All right, so what if I say uh, in our data, what percentage of males are right-handed? What percentage of males? So we had two males total, and one of them was right-handed. So we would say one out of two, 50%. Is that OK? Yes. All right. That is different from our question from of what percentage of our data is uh, males who are right-handed? Who? Okay, so this question says, what percentage of our data? So in this, our answer here would be one out of five, right? So we have a total of five people in our data. This is what percentage of our data is, is or are males who are right-handed? So we have one male who's right-handed out of five people total. So the answer here is 20%. Okay. So make sure you can tell the difference between these two questions. They sound similar, but they're different. And the key, key difference is what percentage of males, what percentage of our data. All right, and the last variation would be what percentage of let's say left let's say right-handed people what percentage of right-handed people are let me just change it up are female okay and your answer would be what percentage of right-handed people so we would say the fraction that we would do would be 2 out of 3. So we would have 66.7%. Does that sound reasonable? Well, I mean, it should. <laughs> OK? Is that, is that OK? Two-way tables. Making two-way tables. So two-way tables, what kind of data are we dealing with here? Categorical. categorical. We've got two categorical variables. Okay, so all of this stuff we've seen today, we've really been dealing with categorical variables. Okay, so we've got two-way tables. We can have questions about two-way tables and things like that. Maybe I'll do uh, just one more practice here. Okay, so maybe I'll just give you the summary table. So let's say a summary table, which is a two-way table. So let's say we go through the entire classroom and not just five students. And we have males and we have females and we have right-handed and left-handed. Uh, and let's say we have uh, 23 males and 4 and 31 and 6. All right, and I ask, maybe I ask what percentage of the classroom is male? And then I might ask what percentage of females are left-handed? Maybe I ask what percentage 
of the class are uh, right-handed males. And maybe one more. What percentage of right-handers are female? Can we answer this, these questions? Yeah. I hope so. OK, so I'll give you guys a minute to figure out the answers to these questions. Please try. up here. Oh shoot, I messed up. <laughs> Sorry. This was, yeah, that, that, was a, that was a mess up. Sorry about that. Just kidding. This is 35.9. How are, how are we doing? Good? OK, so to solve this, we got to figure out our total columns. So 23 plus 4 gives us 27. 31 plus 6 gives us 37 for a total of 64. Adding these up, I get uh, 54 and 10. So this answer, 42.2, would be 27 divided by 64 gives me 42.2%. What percentage of females are left-handed? I would do six p females are left-handed out of 37 females total. What percentage of the class are right-handed males? That would be out of the whole class, 23 divided by 64. And what percentage of right-handers are female? I would do 31 divided by 54. Questions or issues? I'm using a two way table. We're good? <laughs> All right. I will take you guys at your word and say we are good on this topic. Again, you can always go through your notes, try changing up the numbers, and see if you can answer the same questions, okay? All right, so. Let's talk about experiments versus observational studies. Okay. So these are both ways to gather data. These are both ways to gather data. Okay? Observational studies in observational studies we just observe. 
okay? We try not to interfere. with the participants that we are studying. Let me study. Okay. Other than taking the measurement themselves, OK? Taking measurements or make recording notes. And that's important because that we study other than taking measurements or recording notes, okay? Because that's important because even if, uh, let's say you were working at your job and somebody came in and said, okay, I'm just going to observe what you do today. I'm not going to interfere with anything you do. I'm just going to be taking notes on what you do. We know that it's going to affect your behavior, right? You're not going to... Uh, slack off as much as you might normally would. So, um, so we do know that observational studies might uh, have an impact. But other than that, we, we really try not to interfere with our par participants. Okay, But the opposite is true for experiments. In experiments, we do interfere. Okay, In experiments, we assign treatments. Okay assign treatments, or basically uh, we assign conditions or conditions to our participants. Okay, We don't let them choose the conditions or treatments themselves. Treatment sounds like a, like we're doing a cure or something, but treatments are really just conditions. So it could be um, one treatment case could be uh, in a study to see, um, you know, does does exercise reduce stress? One group might do exercise and one group doesn't do exercise. The treatments would be whether you do exercise or not. Okay, so we don't, uh, that, that would be um, assigning of the treatments, okay? Uh, in an experiment, <coughs> excuse me, we also try to control uh, sources of variation. And we talked about this briefly at the very beginning of class when we were talking about licking Tootsie Roll Pops. We want to have, you know, clear, defined structures and things of what does this mean, you know, what, what are we talking about when we say this. So we try to control sources of variation. So we try to make things as consistent as possible for everyone who participates in the experiment, okay? We want things consistent. That's essentially what we're saying. Try to control our sources of variation. Okay, and that way, if we observe a difference at the end between treatment groups, observe differences between treatment groups, we can attribute. the difference to the treatments. All right, so in this case, you know, let's say we want to know, does exercise reduce stress, OK? So ideally, in this hypothetical experiment, we could control as many other aspects of these people's lives as possible. We can make their lives as consistent 
as possible. So maybe we can all give people the same, you know, kind of living situations and this and that, and that, you know, they have the same amount of whatever that they're experiencing that might cause stress. And the only difference between one group and the other group is that this group exercises and this group does not, okay? Everything else about these people's lives would be identical in this hypothetical situation. And that way, at the end, if we see that this group indeed has less stress than this group, we can say, well, everything about their lives were exactly the same, except for the fact that this group exercised and this group did not. Therefore, the difference we see in stress is a result that this group exercised and the other group did not, okay? But of course, in real life scenarios, it would be quite difficult to make people's lives as identical as possible. So we do our best, okay? But ideally, that's the case, okay? And that way, the difference at the end can be attributed to the different treatments or the different conditions that they were under, okay? And ideally, everything else that you're not interested in is going to be consistent for everybody in the group. Okay, is that okay? All right, so let's see. Observational studies, experiments, we assign these things. Okay, so at the end of the day, okay, at the end, we can make cause and effect conclusions only from well-designed experiments. We cannot make cause and effect conclusions from observational studies. And that is because in observational studies, we did not assign the treatments. We, allow, we did not interfere with our participants, we let the participants choose the treatments themselves, okay? So perhaps, well, here's a, here's a silly example, but maybe we are interested in seeing if there's a difference between uh, educational per performance, okay, or maybe not educational performance, yeah, maybe a reading performance in families of, you know, a reading performance of the children and families. And we want to know, does it make a difference what kind of car they drive? Okay? And you do this study, and you see that people in families that drive, and this is, this is going to be a true result, okay? Not, uh, I'm not making this up. You see families that have poor, beat-up cars uh, that, that are worth very little, in general, okay, and, the, and of course every family is different, but in general, across, if you make av do averages of their reading scores, the reading scores of the children in those families will be lower than families where um, the vehicles are uh, worth a lot of money, okay? So uh, families where the vehicles have high value. Sorry about that. Fam in families with vehicles with vehicles of high value versus families of vehicles with low value, you will find that in general, reading performance will be lower in the uh, lower vehicle families. Now, does that mean the cure to or the uh, to fix our education problems in the United States? We just got to give everybody fancy cars. And that's going to solve the problem? No. Okay, what's going on there? Other yeah, other variables that may somehow be linked to economic situations and things like that. Um, e even economic status, we say, you know, class and poverty and these things, that explains why these people are doing poorly and stuff. That in of itself is not the explanation, it's not the cause. There's no reason why money in of itself would cause someone to do better, 
but money if a family has high access to money then uh, you know they are less concerned they you know they have more time to spend on uh, education and leisure um, and do not have to worry about spending all of their time in terms of making sure uh, people are fed and the basic needs are met, okay? And so, so that might seem to be the, uh, the underlying cause, but if you were to just look at an observational study only, and try, you, you might be tempted to make these cause and effect conclusions. Okay, now that's a silly example. We know that's not the case, but a lot of times you might see a study that says, oh, you know, we looked at people who uh, drink red wine and they seem to have lower rates of heart attacks, okay? Um, that doesn't necessarily mean red wine in of itself reduces heart attacks. We would have to do an actual experiment to see if that is the case. So um, you can only make cause and effect conclusions from experiments, okay? So uh, do your reading this week. Uh, it goes into a little bit more detail about experiments and observational studies. It goes into uh, you know a little bit more detail about different things like that. I will post stuff online. Check the uh, website, and I will post the uh, the homework problems from the textbook onto Canvas. That will be the, the place where I post the, those. Okay, we will see you guys next week.